Uh, there's a super chat here that says uh, Arsenal are definitely more attractive than Liverpool right now. Arsenal have a young squad full of superstars and we have shown we will spend now. Here's, here's my thing, Comdian. I appreciate you for the super chat, but if I'm calling Spolitzai right now, we've got Terry, who's Arteta, I'm Klopp. When I go pitch it to, to Spolitzai, he is going to talk about Champions League football. He's going to talk about challenging for the league, exciting project. With me, I'm an elite manager, Jurgen Klopp. I've got five, six elite players, and I've got a project that has shown it's won. This is the difference. So Liverpool Football Club as an institution have lifted the Prem. We've lifted the champs. We've won it all. So a player that's coming in here has seen us have recent success. This is this is the diff the biggest difference between us both is we've seen recent recent success. 2020, we were uh, 20 uh, yeah, 2020, we were Premier League winners. 2019, we were Champions League winners. So just three years ago, we won the two biggest trophies. We've seen it. And and a lot of the core players are still here. And if you're Spolitzai, for example, would you rather play with, with all due respect, with Salah or Saka? You'd rather play with Salah. Would you rather play with Van Dijk or Saliba? Van Dijk. Would you rather play with Alisson or Ramsdale? Alisson. Why? Because these players have made podiums. These players have made World 11s. These players, some of them almost won Ballon d'Ors. They won so much individually and as a collective. So with Arsenal Football Club, it's not an insult to you. Uh, you know, by the way, even Declan Rice that you've signed, if we came in for him and we paid 105 million, he'd be a Liverpool player now, regardless of you having Champions League or not. It's it's just the attraction levels are different because of the manager, because of the players, because of all of that. It's not simply who has Champions League and who has younger players. Also, having younger players does not make you more attractive to, to other players anyway. Like, who, who, like, do you think someone's going to come on and go like, oh my God, yeah, like, let me look at the average age of the squad. No one coming into Arsenal is going to care about that. So, yeah, that's that's what I'd say. I have no problem with Arsenal, though. You guys know. It's all love with Arsenal. <laughs> um, viewers, make sure like buttons are being hit. Make sure you're subscribing to the Football Terrace as well. Uh, this year says, do you think the defence of Liverpool is getting weaker now that we've invested the small budget into the midfield? And, Murad, that's exactly why earlier on, just three minutes ago, I told Terry we're not back. That's why I said this whole where is the FSG out brigade thing is laughable. We need a centre back. That's just the reality. Right now, we need a, a, as soon a, as soon as Spalletti is wearing the Liverpool shirt, go get a centre back directly. Like it's just <laughs> it becomes ultimate priority. Uh, this is Terry. How are we going to free Suki from Nish? Uh, EastEnders is heating up with that storyline. Um, don't quite know yet. I've got a feeling he might be the guy that dies on Christmas, but we'll see if Suki can get away from Nish uh, on EastEnders. Uh, F me, that's some strong, strong tea he's drinking. Yeah, they're, they're coming for you, Matt. There, yeah. Matt. Can I just say one thing to the Arsenal fans? Let me just say this to the Arsenal fans, right? Liverpool in 13 14, we finished second, right? Now, that same Liverpool side versus that Arsene Wenger Arsenal side. If I ask a football player in 2014, who would you rather move to? 99% of the people are saying Arsenal. Like, it's just, please don't think just because you finished above me one year, suddenly you've become more attractive to come to. That's not how the life works. That's <laughs> not how life works. Because using your logic, Newcastle was linked to Spolitzai. They're in the Champions League. They're an exciting project. Why didn't he end up at Newcastle? See? We, it goes both ways. So all the things I said come into account when it comes to attracting and pulling a player. Uh, Nabil here says, FSG in forever. Inshallah. Uh, Eid Mubarak too. Um, is Thank you, Nabil. And, and hopefully, <laughs> uh, speaking uh, Sam speaking Saints once again. FSG might get the deal done, but this should not. This should have been done last summer. I have no confidence in FSG for the long term success of the team. I right. hear that. I hear that. I, I hear what you're saying. My, my brother gave me such a good example the other day. He said he asked me a question. He caught me out, and I'll ask you the same question. If you see someone walking around the local town, local village, local t city collecting rubbish would you typically say they're doing a good job and they're a good person uh yeah of course but what if they're, but what if they're on community service if then that's different yeah i, I, I was different. like bro, what do you mean he said well because he was talking about chelsea he goes all right but he was, they were annoying him and he's like yes they're doing great business now but it's only because they've got to fix what they broke so i'm not going to praise them until i see like the fruits of their labor and i'm like okay that makes sense i get the logic i get the logic uh, this year says, when do you think things will change at Liverpool? We could change it this summer, really. 
All we need is just a midfielder, another mid- for me. Look, I'm not even gonna complain too much. If we just get a center back, I think we could definitely revitalize ourselves next season. Because Terry will tell you this: the people who are watching will tell you this right now. Liverpool have never had a problem scoring goals. Liverpool's problem, everyone knows. It's it's like it's like Liverpool fans have spoken on it so much. It's just become ingrained into everyone's mind. Like if I ask a Spurs <laughs> fan what's wrong with Liverpool, he tell you midfield. So. Yeah, that's that's what we need to fix. And after that, I think we're we're good to go. I think we could win the league next season if we get a centre back, proper centre back. Really, really win the league. Of course. I think Liverpool, if we get a centre back, we could definitely win the English Premier League. There's no reason why we shouldn't win it. I think uh, you know, we we've proven we've we were proven winners of, of the Premier League. We've done it once before, uh, you know, under Jurgen Klopp. But we do need a centre back though. That's that's the thing. We need a serious centre back. Spalletta and McAllister is is unbelievable additions. Um, but you look at next season, Europa League. So essentially, we've got no serious European football until April. So you've got essentially one game a week to play your starters. Um, you know, the signings of Spalletta and McAllister absolutely propels our midfield compared to what we had to watch this season, for example. But that missing, there's one missing piece, which is the centre-back. If we do get a the centre-back, then I think we could definitely win the league next season. One game a week with Klopp coaching these guys for for like the, the important game on, on the weekend. I'd easily back us to beat 90% of the league. That's just the reality. And you look at our results this season. I'm not even saying we should beat like Man United away or Man City away or something. If we just beat Palace and Bournemouth and Brighton and Wolves and the teams that are we were quote unquote expected to beat, we'd be up there anyway. So that's 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 the difference for me. Uh, the, the, this here says the funniest thing about my guy was doing late night streams for Qatar buying Liverpool. How's that turning out? Uh, that Qatar uh, Twitter tag was awesome too. <laughs> um, that whole Qatar thing is honestly such a... That was the best time ever for me. I was like, man, we're finally going to make it out. And then it just came crashing down just a month later. That's <laughs> what it is, man. Uh, please take that cup away from him is what George said. Guys, this cup has black coffee in it, I promise. <laughs> it, all it has is black coffee. <laughs> nothing else. Um, we'll come back to the... There's some uh, tweets about Arsenal. We'll come back to them when we get onto their section a little bit. Sorry, not tweets. Uh, super chats on Arsenal. Uh, Leng and Sweet here says Salah was overrated. The guy is not even better than Sane and Mane. Both miles better than uh, better footballers than Salah. Just elite scorer. I test over stat, pad, stat pads. Neymar is better too. Leng and Sweet, you know, if I'm seeing the profile picture correctly, you're a City fan. If there's two fan bases in this league that will just have to. They're forced to respect Mo Salah. It's your fan base and Terry's fan base because Salah scored so many goals against both Man United and Man City. That's just like, man, this guy just, I'm just not even going to say anything negative about him. When it comes to, to, to Salah, he's not overrated. On his bad season, he has 19 goals. He scored more goals than Saka, who, who's the team of the season right winger on a bad year. You understand? So if he had a good year, that's 10 more goals. So he's not <laughs> overrated at all. And goal scoring, is by far the most difficult trait. For the love of God, look, if you're a forward, look at the Chelsea players. Chelsea have had two good strikers in the his in the in the modern era of the Premier League. Costa and Drogba. That's it. They've had no other good striker. They won the league with Drogba, they won it with Costa. With others, they didn't win it at all because goal scoring matters. Please understand when Mo Salah leaves this league, this is when everyone's gonna sit back and go like. Just 10 years ago, we said 13 goals and eight assists for a winger is like a great season. Salah had like 19 and 13 this season. I'm like, man, he could do better. And you're calling him overrated. Come on, man. What are we doing here? Come on, man. Uh, this here says, it look like Liverpool are gonna going to move Trent inverted. It's the way of the game now. So Liverpool will be back once they figure out the defence is what Zizou says here. 100%. I'm just glad that you know, it's one thing I very rarely do. I told you so, but I told everybody this man is no right back. He is a brilliant playmaker. As soon as he's put into those positions, he's just sensational Here without choices. No, I mean it because the thing with Trent was is as great as he was on the ball when he was playing on the as an out and out right back going up and down the line, his defensive deficiencies were costing Liverpool. When your team was at the peak of its powers and you were able to outscore everybody, it was covered up. That 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 hole in the team, that problem was covered up. There was, you know, it was, it was a band-aid over it, but it's never healed. And as your team become less potent as a collective, the flaws in Trent's game started to protrude. 
defenders should get better with age. He appeared to be getting worse. I don't think he was. I just think the team wasn't as good, so he was being exposed. As soon as he got moved into that inverted role and somebody else was covering his defensive areas, you just saw a different level trend. This is back to being world-class Trent Alexander-Arnold. So if he's as good next season in midfield as we saw in that last two months and for England, you guys have got a brilliant chance next year. There's, there's no doubt about as, it. As an inverted right back, Terry. He's an inverted right back. He's yeah, but listen, I don't, but I don't, I don't agree with any of that stuff. Like for me, I don't judge a player. Based so do you on... call Zinchenko a midfielder and Cancelo a midfielder? Yeah, probably. And I, a reason why I do that now is I look at heat maps. So I'll give you an example. If you look at the, if you look at Sky Sports when they show the position that Bruno Odegaard and KDB start in. They'll often turn around and have, they look like they're playing different roles. But you watch their general heat maps over a season, they pick up the exact same areas on the pitch. So therefore, the formation isn't really key. It's the areas in which a player finds himself in and, 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 and has the majority of his play dictates what they are. Trent is me, is a, he's a midfielder, he's a playmaker more than he is a right back. The starting position may be right back, but the role he takes up in the team is that of a playmaker. So I judge him. No, I, I agree with you. I think that's right. My problem is this season, no one called Zinchenko a midfielder. Last season, no one called Cancelo a midfielder. Like, no, I, we, I, I, I agree with you. you called them what? inverted fullbacks. No, so I get that. An inverted fullback. No, I understand. But, it's, but maybe it's understanding what inverted fullback means. And the reason why I, I pull on it is because people will say, Ashley Cole and... You know, and and Zabaleta and uh, Dennis Irwin and Ryan G and Gary Neville, they never got assists and numbers like this at fullback because the role of fullback has now changed. You're comparing an apple with an orange and expecting it to taste similar, and it's never going to do that. We have to be very, very fair when we talk about these individuals and modern day fullbacks that play in inverted midfield roles or as w wingers, essentially. Of course, certain statistics of theirs are going to be higher than those of yesteryear. But then we have to judge him essentially on that. And that's probably why I'm calling it out because the roles are completely different, you know? I, I agree. Just like you can't compare Beckham and Salah using GA. Yeah, it's, it's two, two totally different roles. It's to totally different. Trent's more comparable to Beckham in terms of you look at their heat maps when they both played, it's the positions on the pitch they take up. But there's just been a, a, a change in terms of a web. Football's where changed in general when yeah, it comes it, to that it, position. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Exactly.